back here and uh, as on every saturday uh, and we are taking up some very important topics so i am dr naganath asma prem uh, i am a geriatrician by profession i am a elder care specialist so where i'm different from anybody else is that i basically look at something known as a comprehensive geriatric assessment in which i uh, look at not only the health part that is the symptoms with which the older person comes in i check their memory i check their uh, presence absence of anxiety depression no no their activities of daily living how independent they are uh, then what is their social side uh, uh, do they have neighbors are they which co they are living in is there any fall risk is there any history of urinary incontinence and also try to make an entire problem list overall and ultimately when the problem list is made i try to focus on every problem so for example a problem which is uh, physical mental social all problems to whatever extent i can do i address it and try to make a continuum of care so the care is not only in the opd or in the inpatient department care is throughout at home as well as trying to get back the older person to the community so a holistic attitude to an older person is what geriatrics is and what the motto of geriatrics is and as in hindi it's known as jara chikitsa so uh, the motto is always to give a complete comprehensive care one stop care so that if there is any problem we are able to help and of course it's a multidisciplinary thing where an other specialist when required will be involved for example a dentist an ophthalmologist for the eyes or an ent specialist for the ears an audiologist so and a physiotherapist a dietitian so it's a team work a multidisciplinary holistic care that is about how geriatrics is to be approached uh, thank you very much doctor so i think we should start our session right now uh, again welcoming all of you to tare social i know 11 o'clock on a saturday is never the best time for it uh, but i re i'm really happy that all of you have been taking uh, time out to learn new stuff about you know about elder care about what is important to elders uh, dr prem has been really generous with his time and and his and his skills Uh, to take us through this entire time during COVID, actually, I think three months now. Uh, the doctor, this session, I, I know that you have to go a bit early today. Uh, I'd like you to start the session um, uh, on uh, learning in uh, in uh, seniors. Uh, a few ground rules. I have muted everybody. Uh, once the doctor comes uh, finishes speaking, uh, please unmute yourself. Ask him a question. Uh, in case you think that there is background noise or you get another call. uh please uh, mute your phone because it disturbs everybody else um this entire recording will be on my website in case you want to listen to it again we will i'll tell you that uh, during the end doctor uh over on to you yeah so uh, good morning everybody again so i am i picked up a i picked up a topic today which is not entirely medical but it is very close to my heart and it is it is very important so that is learning in older adults because i think there is no age for learning learning is something which can happen when you are young when you are middle age when you are old age so learning in older adults is very very important now the great albert einstein himself said once you stop learning you start dying so learning is continuous we have done it in various stages of life the way we learn might be different so for example when we get older maybe we'll take a bit more time maybe we might be a bit slower but that doesn't mean we can't learn and education in later life can be defined as acquiring knowledge and new skills in a conscious and targeted manner and lifelong learning is very very important why because it gives you a personally and socially motivated experience and it helps you in getting all your new skills so why is it important because learning and education becomes very good so that it helps you in enjoyment recreation it helps you to adopt adapt to the changes for example technology lifestyles finances health so that's why even in active aging and in longevity that is in, in actually hey, hey, long, a very important role. so what are the benefits of learning at older age one is it helps you to help healthier and active so as we get older our brain has to be kept active so as we have new skills new subjects so it will help you in keeping your mind sharp then it gives you an emotional boost you now the excitement of the fact that acquiring new skill gives you a massive emotional boost the fact that you are able to get that new skill you feel stronger more confident then you have the sense of independence of being healthy 
and happy it helps in uh, uh, improving your decision making process helps in improving your self efficacy then not only daily life challenges it will also help you in improving your cognitive problems so it has that thing known as a can do factor so for example you're like no i can do this i can learn this so you have this so you get more confident you want to handle newer tasks and you're like i can do this so that can do factor is very positive then it also gives an opportunity of meeting new people whether it's an online class or an offline class in person you meet new people it gives an opportunity for you to meet people with similar interests they can be your friends and age is not a limit it can be younger people it can be older people same age they then you get great acquaintances and your social life also remains vibrant now it has a very important impact on mental health it gives you a sense of identity ability to cope having a purpose in life it gives you a great level of well being especially increases your life satisfaction and has positive outcomes in your mental well being then cognition cognition that is memory it is very very important that everyday activities to an extent can help in stimulating the brain but when you do newer activities active learning it helps in stimulating your brain in a good way and it does not mean that you need to do some courses only no it can be just maybe a part of some group discussion on a current topic whether you like politics sports uh whether it's it's about some past topic whether it's nostalgia whether it's movies learning something completely new unfamiliar and mentally challenging is the one which is more stimulating and better so the words are new unfamiliar mentally challenging so that stimulates your brain that gives you that extra kick now learning a new skill and mindfully apply applying it to improve the cognitive functions helps you a lot so it could be anything uh research says that classes in photography gardening flower arranging maybe scrapbook cooking classes by cooking classes i mean for example something specific making new cuisines something that you have not already done then of course in this day and age a lot of you have learned how to use a smartphone better if you didn't already know technology all these things are very important now the ultimate aim would be to have a university of third age in india now this u3a was actually started in france in 1972 it just said that these are universities where educational opportunities will be given for older people and this experiment was very 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 much a hit and it spread to other educational groups also in other in other european countries as well and it has also spread to the united states as well so the ultimate aim would be to get u3a here wherein you are actually just getting new courses new skills not for a degree not for a, some exam but just because you like it and it helps in maximizing you it helps in seeking out creative and innovative thinking now there is things which you should keep in mind on lifelong learning one is why should one learn one is you want to give back always you want to teach you want to use new skills to constantly learn because learning never stops to keep your mind active to keep your brain healthy stimulated to obtain goals maybe at some point of time you wanted to do certain things but you couldn't for whatever reason understanding the meaning of life maybe understanding yourself better to focus on the positives and the negatives as i said to focus on what you can do rather than focusing on what i cannot then extending your thinking and learning capacity actively participating in life giving life a new meaning and of course as i said to develop new friendships now what this was the why we should learn what should one learn it could be anything it could be about other cultures it could be new talents new skills for example gardening maybe i mean maybe uh, drawing painting see we are not going to we are, we are not looking for awards we are not looking for rewards we are not, we are not, we are not going to become an artist you might be if you are very good but that does not mean you should stop learning learning is at old age should not be for a reward always then craft painting driving a car learning new languages technology you say this then spiritual aspects of life maybe things that you wanted to think about things fascinated you hobbies current affairs new subjects then music and also family history your own family history sometimes going back into the family tree seeing who was who what was your lineage so all these things also something you can learn now we covered why and what so how 
of course traveling is a bit limited these days but travel when things get better travel is one of the best ways of learning because you go to new places learn new cultures learn new languages new activities having reading sessions new experiences having new challenges cultural activities seeking opportunities mentor maybe mentoring younger people for example people who are the same course or who have done something and you want to mentor them then moving out of your comfort zone that also you should learn doing as i said doing the same things is easy doing new things is the one which challenges you so we finish the why we finish the what we finish the how so where should one learn ideally in new places because it gives you new experiences maybe now we will not be able to do it in time we will be at work from others young and old we can learn from others young and old support groups like how how we have i mean we are having support groups for a lot of older older adult groups and their caregivers then groups like this now we are we are actually talking and uh, we are trying to learn new things groups specific for art dance language drama then learn at home i mean you can learn at home as well then formal courses are there for example coursera.org there are a lot of free courses there are a lot of paid courses as well then volunteer organizations you can volunteer as well then e learn now e learning online is also another factor which is which is very very important so if i have to just put it again it's important to know the why the what the how and the where purely because this helps us in actually channelizing ourselves in a goal that this is what we want to learn or this is our interest or this is what we want to do i mean even learning at old age you which should have a bit of a plan purely because you want to learn something you are interested in and not be pushed into something you are not interested in which would which would take you on a back foot and stop you from learning so learning the bottom line is learning is very important at any age and in older adults it not only helps in improving the physical part the mental part the psychological part the cognitive part it gives you an overall sense of well being it gives you a positive attitude it gives you something to look forward to and as they say it gives you a purpose in life it gives you that no i can do this that can do factor which i talked about so i can move out of my comfort zone and i can do that also and another part about learning is when you learn it's easier for you to teach others as well and spread the word so that's how things will obviously get ahead now on that aspect as far as learning is concerned we we as such in graceful living are also doing classes on how to uh, actually be familiar with online portals like uh, zoom like google meet like microsoft teams because we have realized that the silver lining according to me in the covid era is that most older people want to get better with technology so we are having these sessions which are usually one on one first and then personally also and then in group sessions also because both sessions are important and any doubts you have we have a specialist who actually helps us out so this is also something i wanted to mention because i know older people are hungry for learning and it is just that they need the same push as any other younger person does in my experience an older person does things much better as i said you might be slower but that does not mean you don't do it well you are slow because you do it more organized you have had so many situations in life so you actually make it more planned as compared to a, maybe a younger person who's only thinking about the goal of finishing it whereas you have you can think of relishing it enjoying it and actually do so learning is very important and uh, thanks a lot for everybody to uh, for your patient hearing this was just an overall on learning in older adults it's a topic which is very close to my heart because we believe that at any age learning should never take a back step and you should learn whatever you want to thank you thanks a lot thank you very much doctor i think this was a session which was much needed we have always uh, talked about this i think uh, and i think now thanks to covid a lot of people are actually creating avenues for uh, elders for seniors to actually engage themselves mentally as well as physically uh, before i put it on for questions uh, to the doctor today we'll have to keep this a bit short uh, can i uh, i would like to ask a question doctor about what are the activities that people can do the seniors can do when they have when they are visually compromised in other words the eyesight is not very good uh, because of uh, it could be cataract it could be aging uh, 
uh, when you don't have good eyesight, what can you do? Yeah, in that case, I think they might need help as well. Another person could help. But I think the biggest sense that really works if the eyesight is a bit bad, but the hearing is good, I think music is a good way. Like even, uh, for example, newspaper reading sessions uh, in which they can actually hear the news in a collective way. Then I have seen a lot of a lot of uh, people who have uh, are visually impaired to a great extent, but they're still good artists. So it's not that they can't do it. And I'm very happy that more and more apps, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking about the blind as well as visually impaired, more and more applications, more and more technology is coming out for people who have difficulty with vision. So I think the other senses have to be used. In this case, the sense of touch in which craft can be done. Of course, it might need facilitation by another person, but to be to be very frank, once the older person will learn it, they will be able to do it because the senses are obviously uh, they they tend to learn it. Then I think audio audio is one of the greatest ways of uh, stimulating them. Of course, if hearing as well as vision is impaired, which can happen in a lot of in a lot of older people to a great extent, then we will have to focus more on the sense of touch which might or might not be possible here of course if you are uh, you are staying with your uh, you are grandparents or parents and you are able to facilitate that then it's okay but of course through technology it is not very easy to do as of now but yeah it is something which is very much possible uh, thank you doctor any questions from uh, from the group uh, please unmute yourself and ask a question I would say even, I mean, in today, if at all you have any questions and even comments, you can also say the same because I think, and if everybody is learning something, they can also share them. Yeah, learning keeps you, this, day, this age, when, see, the people in the house, even your grandchildren and even your children, the, you are dealing with two generations alone. You are alone, but you have to deal with two generations. That is your children and their children. So it's a vast difference. And when you, then you feel, oh, you cannot get involved in this. You cannot get involved in that. Sometimes physically, sometimes they have their own thinking, their own way of looking at things, which we cannot, our thoughts cannot match with their thoughts, the modern thoughts. And the grandchildren do not at all. Everybody has their own, no, this is what we have to do now. We, our times are changed, you know. So keeping ourselves busy at this age is very important. I feel now for me. I you know that physically I'm a, I'm not yeah, that yeah, yeah. fit out and do anything, but sitting in the house they don't even allow me to um, cook in the house because my hand sometimes is not steady and if I cut something suddenly my hand will slip. So that's very they're protecting me, no doubt. But, you know, you are in a habit of doing everything. You want to do this. You want to do that. So what I do, I keep cleaning the garlic. I keep cleaning the vegetables, the small, small things. Earlier, I used to teach my grandchildren. Now they are my granddaughter. Now son is 12, grandson is finished 12 standard. So that I left him after his 9th standard, 8th standard. Now my granddaughter I was teaching. Now she is in the 8th standard. And she gave me warning, Nana, now you please don't come and teach me. I want to do my own self-studies. I said, very good. But if ever I need your help, I will come to you. I said, yes, yes, you're always welcome. So see, the times changes like that. So what time I was spending for her, instead of just sitting and thinking over that, I have to keep myself busy with something else. So in the beginning, it becomes a little difficult for you to accept so many things. But yeah. as the time passes, when I'm keeping myself busy, I keep doing my knitting work, I keep doing uh, stitching, I keep doing my crochet, whatever I see, I keep folding the clothes, I keep reading the Bible, I take out the notes, and younger people in the church, I keep, they, they all say, Auntie, you are a great inspiration for us. I take part in different quiz, Bible quiz, because now I can't go out anyway, so I take part in church quiz, Bible quizzes they have. So I think that is very important. I, oh, I think you are you're very true. I mean, ultimately, I think, I think when you get older, it is also a time for you to enjoy for yourself. 
and when you have the time you should give it to yourself and it's very good that you're keeping yourself busy because that's the way to go and ultimately yes your i mean your relatives your kin will always be there it's not that they won't be there but yeah you should you should give yourself time for sure any other questions uh, from the group yeah comments from the group yes ma'am uh, please unmute yourself so doctor uh, if there are uh, why people are thinking of questions um, just a thought uh, so that uh, this group as well as if any of your friends at tare social you know we've been conducting recreation uh, uh, events for seniors uh, because of your learning session uh, what we are trying to do now is create a learning avenue for seniors so every thursday from 4 to 5 uh, we will be teaching our seniors anybody who wants to join in on zoom uh, something that they can do alone uh, after the session keep their minds alert keep them socially uh, active so what we're going to do this thursday uh, if uh, people are interested is teach everybody to do ku Uh, if if a lot of you have not learned sudoku it's a very interesting game it can be as simple as you want it can be as complicated as you want um i do it i my daughter does it and my mom does it so it can it, it spans all generations um we are going to be teaching people uh, on thursday at 4 i will be sending out a uh, invite on that uh, please the the week after that we will be teaching people how to use online gaming so you can play with your friends sitting at home on your phone playing games with your friends uh, we will uh, connect uh, with you guys on that uh, but that's uh, what we are doing uh, anybody else has any questions for the doctor hello doctor uh, hi can, can you hear yeah doctor this session is so concise in fact in fact that was my desire when i was a youth i used to see you know seniors who are retired sitting in the in the university studying with me and i used to wonder how they can do that today i am in that situation and i thank and praise god for this lockdown and thank and praise god for people like you and sali who are reaching out to us and coming into our homes to educate us to make it so concise and it gives a, a great pleasure and a sense of well being even though at this age also even prior the lockdown i'm very active in the sunday school every sunday morning at 8 o'clock i would go and be present in the sunday school you know being with the adolescents the peer the the teenagers you know sharing with them understanding what the problem is because once upon a time i was also sitting on that bench and i had also a lot of questions and queries so i can get into their shoes so uh, the session is very good and i look forward and thank you for all that you are doing yeah welcome ma'am yeah and that's what according to me according to me the older adult is a wealth a reservoir of experience and knowledge and as a younger generation we need to take advantage of that one and two is i think it's a steps which has to be taken from both sides so you are doing your bit the younger people should do their bit the older people should do their bit so it's always we have to meet midway sometimes what happens is both both the parties are just thinking and none of them are moving ahead so that's what is important in intergenerational bonding is very very important because ultimately i mean from my own experience with my grandparents i mean there are a plethora of experience plethora of stories and my childhood was absolutely great because the excitement that you get of course the advantage of being a grandchild everybody knows uh, it's a free it's a free will and your parents can't say anything to you that's a different story but yeah so that's how it is so i think we should we as the younger generation should obviously take full advantage of the older people and trying for them because they are really helpful and they can be really really a plethora of experience enterprise knowledge thank you yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you dr prem but uh, doctor this uh, uh, dr prem um, yes ma'am yes ma'am please this your uh, this thing you said that you are specialized in only Hello. Yeah, I look at I look can at old people. Can you hear people. me, doctor? Uh, yeah, I can hear. Hello. There is just turbans. Just one minute, ma'am. I think I, my net is going down. One minute. One minute. I'll be back. One minute. Uh, Hannah, just repeat what you had said. I think he couldn't hear you.
Everybody, just give us another minute. I think he's having a net problem. His video is not starting. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so connecting. It's not on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got a net. Net was bad at that time. Uh, Anandi, would you like to repeat your question? Uh -huh. uh, I think... uh, no, Doctor Prem, that you said that you are dealing with the uh, uh, seniors. Yeah, yeah I now, deal with only the seniors. In a psychological level and also the physical level. I mean, I mean the everything. elements of the physical elements yeah, yeah. and also the psychological. Psychological, memory, yeah, everything. Uh, so now. Yeah, 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 the memory automatically, understanding is very good at this age, uh, as you say, but memory becomes little. Um, blood or uh, something is it uh, it happens because of uh, uh, age or uh, we have to concentrate more like i read i understand very well but afterwards say sometimes immediately soon after that in an hour's time when i again think what I, what was i reading try to remember many things i tend to forget okay our names no. So the thing is, if, if it if it comes back if it comes back to you, then that's not an issue. It's not an issue. No, if it comes back to you, that's not an issue. Uh -huh. No, comes back. What I mean? I, I no, don't if remember. If forgotten comes back to you after some time, then that's not a real memory problem. I have so to read again and again. Just concentrate on trying again, to write. Again, I to go back and read. Yeah, then that's after okay. reading couple of things. Try to reread it, and then that will obviously give you a better. It will give you a better chance to remember. Yeah. And then one more thing now. What I feel is that now what happens? The present is not so. Um, distinct, like, but the past is more uh, like the childhood, the uh, youth, your youth, and those things come more to your mind. Is, is it does it happen like that? Like, of the last 10 years, 15 years, uh, some uh, I'm I'm not the very, real past, I forget a lot of things past, of that. Yeah, the real past memory is not affected to a great extent. What gets affected is the immediate memory and the remote memory, which we say is what we maybe maybe day or two or recent uh -huh. memory. And then it's an issue. Usually most people remember the past very clearly, even if they have memory issues. So I would say if it's happening sometimes and it's not a major problem, you don't need to worry about it. But you need to keep stimulating yourself. For example, when we used to go to school, we used to write things down to actually remember them. So that's how you need to keep remembering things because see the brain, we need to retrain. The yeah. brain has taken yeah. changes over the years. The, as you get older, the brain does shrink to an extent. So it's not that it does not. And certain changes do take place, but just forgetting here and there is not a major issue. But if you're really forgetting things on a daily basis, not remembering where you are suddenly, not remembering people, forgetting names, then it's an issue. So don't worry about it. Try to re-stimulate your brain again by writing down things. Um, is there anybody else who has questions? Um, yeah, I write every day. Yeah, and then. Uh, any other questions, or uh, should we call it a day? I know Doctor has a bit of a time constraint today. Uh, 
Um, if anybody has any questions, we'll take them, or else uh, we'll call it a day. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for the session. Again, very timely, very required in today's day and age. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Dr. Prem. This has really been very helpful to all of us. Uh, in you, case you need to contact Dr. Prem, you can go to our website and just connect to him. Uh, his number is there. Yeah. Um, you can also call him at Jaslok Hospital. Just Google it uh, and you get connected to him. Uh, or you can write to us and we will uh, send you his, uh, his number also. Uh, the another thing is that, again, in case all of you are interested, uh, you can listen to any of Dr. Prem's uh, earlier sessions. On our website, please go there and click on the topic that you want to listen to. And finally, uh, we are starting these sessions on uh, new things that seniors can learn and therefore do by themselves to keep themselves mentally and, uh, and physically stimulated. Uh, we start on Thursday, 4 to 5. We will be doing Sudoku. So please join us. Please learn and enjoy it. I know a lot of people who have been enjoying it uh, throughout. We have created adequate Sudokus for you so that you can enjoy uh, for some time at least. Uh, with that, I'd like to end the session. Thank you very much.